Today we're going to be looking at the Black Widow receiver hitch loading ramp. Now this version here is the all steel, so it is a little bit heavy. I'll uh, put on the screen uh, the weight of it. And then, uh, first of all, we're just going to get uh, this whole thing constructed. Uh, it's down in uh, a few little parts or some hardware to. Uh... Right, so first of all, uh, why a receiver hitch loader? Versus just putting in the bed of your truck and uh, or a trailer. That's a good question. So <clears throat> there are times where I go on trips. I don't really want to pull a trailer. You know this whole extra vehicle thing, if you will, trailer, just to be able to haul this. <clears throat> uh, that's just one extra piece of equipment that I have to keep up with. So that leads to why not just load it in the bed of your truck? Well, some trucks you can. Uh, <clears throat> some trucks probably wouldn't be too hard to load it into the bed of uh, with a ramp. Uh, my particular truck is pretty tall in the back, so I'm going to show you right now how tall it is. So I have a Ram Dooley, and it's kind of tall. I mean, look at that. It's right at my right at the top of my hip. <laughs> that is. A lot of distance between the ground and <clears throat> the bed of the truck and it makes quite a bit steep angle so I can't really push the bike up the ramp I have to power it up and there's too many things that can go wrong I can slip you know it's just it's really not feasible for me maybe for some of you it is but for me it's really not feasible to ramp this thing up I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on how to assemble this thing uh, I'll just kind of point out the basics here and there. It's not going to be a full detailed video of putting this thing together. Basically, I want to get it together, uh, get the bike loaded on there. I will show you that. And then we're going to take it for a ride down the street and uh, we'll set up a camera back there. Just see how it rides, if there's any kind of play in it at all. Uh, I think it's going to be really sturdy. All right, so next step, let's uh, get it put together and get it on the truck. So a quick note about this receiver hitch rack is it is a two inch tube and I have a class five receiver hitch. I do have a one ton dually. So I have to get my reducer sleeve to make this work. <coughs> so that's pretty easy. All right, so here is an issue that I run into with the anti-tilt mechanism that came with the Black Widow receiver hitch rack is if you're having to run a reducer like I am because I have a class 5 hitch I have to reduce it down to a 2 inch receiver so this can slide in this does not fit if this plate here was about an inch longer then it would work but <clears throat> the reducer sleeve is taking up that space and it's not allowing for this to clamp down basically it's rendering this useless so I anticipated that when I ordered this system and I went ahead and ordered along with this receiver hitch a anti-tilt uh, deal from Rhino so if you're familiar with Rhino they do a lot of ratchet straps tie downs things like that so this is a uh, pretty good one with a good reviews we're gonna see how well this works but it looks like it's going to work with the reducer sleeve. So let's see. That's all the play we have in it right now. We're going to tighten it up and then see how much play we have. check out that anti-tilt so it looks like it is biting onto the main receiver so that is good it's a nice big heavy duty plate big u-bolt let's see oh man look at that nice nice and solid trying to get this done before it gets 110 today here in texas Ooh, it's been hot here all right so first thing we need to do now that we got our receiver hitch part in we got our anti-tilt it's solid, man. This thing is great. Let's get the main ramp put on. So you can tell this is the main ramp because all the holes in the side there. 
and because of the reflector tape for you know why the reflector tape is there so anyway so now we just got to get our bolts looks like it's gonna be four bolts front and back and let's do that next well we got our uh bike receiver hitch uh hauler installed it's pretty easy uh putting it together that is and putting it on the truck it is still fairly tall but not as tall as the bed of the truck remember it was at the top of my hip and this one is right at the bottom of my quad muscle so just about three to four inches above my knee that is a lot more manageable i am able to push the bike without powering it all the way to i get to the cradle I get to the cradle, it, it is a lot of resistance. So I think I'm going to just power it up. And I do have this step. This is, I keep that in my uh, cargo treader. I use that for cargo trailer camping, little mini hauler, toy hauler for my motorcycles. So we're going to try powering it up. Uh, and then. Cradle. I may have to loosen the bolts on this cradle. It does seem a little bit rigid. I think I'm going to do that. And then we'll get a video of just walking and powering it up. Uh, with all the fairings on the bike, it is hard to see that tire running into the track. Uh, we do have a good two to three inch lift on the ramp and this part as well. So hopefully we don't uh, run off the ramp while we're trying to power it up. Let's give it a shot. Also, when I ordered my uh, Black Widow receiver hitch motorcycle carrier, 600 pound uh, weight rating. I went ahead and ordered the uh, Rhino. This is uh, four straps and the soft straps. So I think the straps are going to be kind of long, but we're going to cut them and cinch the ends. Just make it, we're going to make this custom fit for just this setup, and that's all we're going to use it for. So I'm gonna get that set up and then uh, I wanna have those straps ready. So once I do get the bike on there, I wanna be able to attach a strap or two while I'm there and then it can hold it and sit there while I uh, finish battening things down. Okay, so I'm gonna power this thing up for the first time. I didn't even do a trial run of powering it. I did do a test run without video, pushing it up, and I got it up to the cradle. I couldn't push it up over the cradle. Uh, I did loosen the bolts on the cradle, so less resistance for, for it to move. But uh, it's going to lift the bike up and does create quite a bit of resistance, so I think we're going to have to power it anyway. Unless you got somebody helping you pushing on the back, uh, you could do it that way. It's probably the best way, but... Powering it up, I think it's more manageable than trying to ramp it up in the bed of the truck. Let's try it out. The first thing we need to do is make sure we are in line with this ramp, front and back. I might try to push it up just to get my wheels lined up. Okay, I think we're lined up there. Now let's power it up. We got to feather, feather that clutch and the gas. It's going to be a little tricky, but I think it'll be all right. All right, so far, so good, not too bad. It's a little tricky too with the pull bag on the tank, or the tank bag. All right, let's see what we can do.
Well, that wasn't too bad. Uh, I thought I was going to need this step stool. And I really didn't. Uh, the only thing is, I kind of felt like the tank bag was in my way with my right arm over here. But the hardest part was riding it over the cradle. And you got to watch out for these uh, tie down bars. You don't want to hit the knee on these things while you're trying to uh, move the bike up. So next I got to determine if I have my cradle in the right position. Uh, they say your tire should just bear, your front tire should barely be off of the ramp. And I think I need to move mine one click further towards the front. Because it's not quite cradling on the back side of the tire on the top of this. I think it should be a little more that way. So, guess what we get to do? We get to take the bike off. So, you're going to get to see me take the bike off. And uh, to do that, we're going to put it in neutral. And we're just going to ease it back and use the front brake with our right hand. I know, easier done than said, right? <laughs> All right, we're in neutral. <clears throat> Our uh, tracking looks good. Our rear tire is uh, pretty much centered on the ramp, so I think we're good. Just when you're backing down, you tend to want to lean the bike towards you, and when you do that, the tracking can get off. You can well just try to make sure and keep this bike upright. Yeah, like I said, easier said than done. So now we just gotta back it off of this cradle and keep it from rolling down back on us. And we got this thing here. It's a little tricky. It's uh, definitely going to take some getting used to. So it's taking quite a bit to uh, back it off of that cradle. So that kind of tells me too that we don't really have the cradle in the correct position. There is adjusting holes to position that cradle. I think we need to go further in. We're going to give that a try and. Uh, Test that out. First, we got to get this off. I know you want me to keep the video going. Do you want to see if I dump the bike on me? <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's 10:30 in the morning, and it's already 100 degrees. It might be 103 already. Uh, they say it's supposed to be 106. All right, quit delaying and get this damn thing off of this. So, we... <laughs> all right, here we go. Man, I want this. This is what I want to do. I want to grab, like right here, and pull. But I don't have, I think I'm going to put it in first gear and pull the clutch. I'm going to control the speed that way. Because I don't know if I can get my hand back over here quick enough. i got to think about this stuff. Think it all the way through. All right. Oh, almost had it. Keep the steering wheel straight. All right, a little bit more. Oh. Okay. Now, see how the clutch? I let off the clutch and it stopped my momentum. And we definitely got to move that cradle forward. So let's do that. I'm going to make sure I'm still tracking good. And I want to get my leg behind this bar. Feather the clutch. Little bit, little bit. Okay. All right. I know what you're thinking. It looks just as hard as ramping it onto the truck. Ramping it onto the bed of the truck is way harder, trust me. Especially if you have a high up truck like I do. This is way more manageable, way more manageable. I'm not having to step up on these stools or additional ramps. Okay, we're ready for a run two here, loading the bike. We move the cradle one spot forward that way. And uh, that should be good to go. Hopefully that'll be the right spot. I got our tie down straps in place 
I got my soft ties, soft straps in place. I'm going right here for the back. And then I like to go right here instead of the handlebars. All right, uh, loading the back on the receiver hitch uh, hauler, take two. Okay, that looks a lot better. The back side of this cradle is hitting the tire somewhat, and the tire is just barely touching the bottom of that ramp. So I think we got our front tire cradle in the correct position. So it's not gonna stand here on its own. I mean, it might for a few seconds, but don't trust it. Go ahead and have your straps ready to go like I do. Well, we got the bike level, pretty much level on the ramp here. Uh, this is just trial error, trial run to uh, first get used to the ramp. The second try getting the bike up on the ramp, it wasn't bad. I mean, I did it all at one shot. It was, it was pretty easy. I'm able to manage this way better than trying to ramp it into the bed of my truck. So this ramp is pretty cool. It does have these uh, first substantial posts here, and they fit in those holes to keep the ramp in place to save me salt. Ooh, it is hot. It's been sitting in the sun. But anyway, it just slides up in there, and then uh, we bolt it down with a wing nut. Okay, so we have a plastic washer and a metal washer and a wing nut. So we're gonna put the plastic washer down first, the metal washer, and tie it down with the wing nut. Also, these built-in bolts for mounting the ramp. And the holder here, we have these little pin clips. That's just to make sure if this does work loose, it's not gonna come off and you're gonna lose everything. All right, our little project's done. We're ready for a test drive. I got the 360 camera set up out here. I have the camera attached to the truck. So that way we should be able to see any kind of rocking that the bike is gonna do. It's probably gonna do some, I'm sure, as we're hitting bumps. I don't really like all that play. Uh, it's supposed to hold, it's a 600 pound. We got about 460, maybe 470. We got, you know, some pounds to play with here so in theory we should have no problems but I'm just a little bit worried about going down the road even some rough roads maybe uh some off-road trail not real heavy duty off-road it's like dirt maybe some washboard type of roads going down the truck but I want to be able to load this bike full panniers full fully loaded camping gear everything uh when we get somewhere we can unload and just take off uh I may do additional two straps on here just right here on the back top rail there's a hole here you can put a strap strap it to here and over there and just kind of cinch it to the truck just to kind of keep it from going back and forth front front and back let's get the truck let's just test it out ah the bike is loaded everything's strapped down receiver hitch pin is locked Went over everything, everything is ready to go. So we're gonna do our little test run here. Man, it's so hot. It's 113, it's 12.30 in the afternoon. Already 113 here in Texas. It's brutal.
it's a little nerving, I'm telling you. Uh, I got a $13,000 bike back there on a less than $300 receiver hitch ramp. I think I'm going to do a test run just down the road here. We'll turn around and come back. I think I'm going to do those additional two straps like I was talking about and see if we notice any difference. Uh, I think that will make a big difference in as far as front to back swaying. Uh, the side to side swing, we're not getting that. But thanks to that Rhino anti-tilt uh, bracket. All right. got a 360 camera back there attached to the truck let's go I can see it rocking a real little bit already as we're taking off even your trailer my utility trailer single axle when I put this bike on there and I test to make sure it's strapped down good it still rocks a little bit and it's the trailer is just flexing you know what I mean so it's not completely rigid, this these metal products. So it's just uh, rocking back and forth more than I care for it to. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, we're just babying it right now. I don't know if you can see it in this camera. But we'll switch back and forth to the 360 camera. So far, so good. Now we've got the two additional straps. I've got it attached to the uh, top rail of the truck bed back there and then I've got the front one on the bike connected to the handlebar and then the back one on the uh, the back luggage rack so what I did I just drew it towards the back of the truck giving it a little bit of tension and I think we're going to reduce our front to back swaying if you will I see quite a bit of difference already just uh, putting in gear here on the truck taking off I think that's going to help a lot. That'll really help secure it. Just keep it from all that swaying front to back. I think less movement is best. I don't know. It probably would take a long, probably years and years for to be able to break that metal structure underneath there. But I just like to be on the safe side. So I might get two more additional ratchet straps. I'm going to go put a little bit more resistance on the straps here real quick. I just made a little adjustments, tighten the straps a little bit. All right, let's uh, basically go the same route we did before. See what we think. Just wa watching it from the truck inside here, uh, back there, looks good. A lot less forward to back, tilting, swaying. Yeah, I think that's a lot more secure right there. I like that. That uh, I think I'm gonna order two more of those Rhino straps, red ones, and I'm gonna cut them to size. And those straps are just gonna be just for this setup, and that's it. Man, that is way better. It really cinched everything up back there. 
That's going to do it. That's going to work. Very nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Wolfman Moto 660. Uh, didn't really have an adventure on the bike today. Honestly, I don't see how these guys ride out in this 100, 110 degree weather and full gear. Man, it's so hot. Uh, it's really got to cool down for me to be able to get out there. I mean, I can go do a morning ride, evening ride. Man, as far as these going out camping, I just can't do it in this heat, man. It's just too much. It's just way too hot. All right, so we're about halfway through our route here. We're going to wrap this up here. Wolfman Moto 660 with the Black Widow all steel receiver hitch 600 pound motorcycle ramp. Yeah, that's a mouthful. It's a lot. All right, y'all have a good one. Thank you.